Well, they are the Pac-12 champs, and of course, they are getting ready for the Rose Bowl. The head coach of the Oregon Ducks is with us right now. Coach Cristobal, congrats on this class, man. First time ever, two five-star guys in the same class in school history. I mean, what do you do? Just put your feet up now and just go, yo, we got this. <laughs> No way. No way. Our conference is too competitive and, and we want to continue to represent our conference, our university, our program at the highest level possible. We're chasing a standard and it requires acquiring that type of personnel and developing it. And, um, you know, judging by the way, our, our guys are continuing to, to, to garner all these offseason accolades. Things are headed in the right direction, but we're hungry. We're driven. We want we want to do even better. Coach, I, I'd love just I want you to take us through your thoughts as your linebacker, Mr. Flo. This dude is one of the best players in the world. As he's evaluating what hat to pick up, what were you thinking along that way? Or maybe you were already on the inside. Well, here's the best part. We had practice scheduled, so I was on the field. So <laughs> I want to spare myself the, uh, you know, those heart attack moments, but you know, I look at that moment right there and how incredibly awesome that was. And um, I got to see the tape after and how excited Justin was. I mean, he's obviously as good as it gets. And and I think back to a couple weeks before that when Noah Sewell made his announcement after his his state championship game as well. Again, another guy, the best in the country. I mean, both these guys are the very best at what they do. And then they're complimented by Jackson LaDuke, who we feel is as good as anybody in the country as well. So you're looking at three guys that I've never seen a, a linebacker or been around a linebacker class like this, and they're all competitors. They are all going to make us instantly better. And, uh, and I like bringing them all up together like that because that's the way it should be. The, what we're building here in our culture requires that, that we do it in that manner, in that fashion. So uh, I, I'm so excited. I, you know, it makes me want to just go out and – Let's start the 2021 class, man. Let's roll. <laughs> so, so you're at practice when Justin Flo is announcing, and you waited till the end? Like, you didn't have it up on the jumbotron? You didn't have an assistant telling what was happening? All right. There was a guy across the field <laughs> with a cell phone and, uh, and Internet and social media capabilities, and I just look over at him and was waiting for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And when that thumb went up, man, you know, my, my whistle blew that much harder. You know, my sprints got that much better. So... It's a um, great moment for the program. A little more pep in your step. You know what's interesting, Coach, because in our offices here at Pac-12 Network, as you can imagine, we have alumni from all 12 of the universities that happen to be working in this building. And I think we were all watching, you know, Justin on our television monitors. Yogi and I are in the office. All of a sudden, you hear screams down the hall. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I bet Coach is probably yelling like this as well up in Eugene. So I'm glad I know the real story about what was transpiring at practice. I'm sure, once again, a little more pep in your step with that whistle as you're marching around. But but from a attack talent standpoint here, Oregon itself, I, I've talked to you and I've talked to some of the guys around this program and this coaching staff. You guys have gone everywhere in the entire country. There's this misconception, I think, about talent that's leaving the footprint. How are you guys going into Southern California, going into SEC country and pulling guys up to Eugene? Well, I think it's, it's pretty obvious and pretty evident when people set foot on our campus that there's no school in the country that invests in the student athlete like the University of Oregon does. Uh, from a facility standpoint, from a resource standpoint, student athlete experience, I mean, it's, I feel like I've been at some really good places in, uh, in my career, very fortunate, very blessed to be a part of some great places, and I've never seen or been around a place like, like Oregon. So our guys love it here. They're our best ambassadors, and, you know, word gets out. I mean, when our student athletes, when our players are having a great experience and they're having success, I mean, you've seen the amount of guys that are 27 freshmen played this year, and newcomers, when you see the amount of guys that are getting postseason honors and yeah. awards, you know, an Outland Trophy winner, a Campbell Trophy winner, all those guys that were all conference selections and more. We have, I don't know, three AP All-Americans and more. So it's player development is real here. And again, with talent acquisition at that level, it just bodes well for us in the, in the coming years. Late acquisition, Robbie Ashford. Known this guy with the Elite 11, baseball player, football player, dynamic athlete. How did you get him without having at least an offensive coordinator in our eyes? Maybe you have one that, that you guys haven't shared yet, but wondering where the update is with that and, and what you think of Robbie Ashford. Well, I'll tell you a couple of things. Number one is we feel that Marcus Soro did a great job with us here, and he's going to actually coach the bowl game as well. Uh, we all got here together, so we're going to finish this thing. We're systematic, and, and because we are that way, 
we feel it's best for the players in the program. And the way that we recruit and the way our systems are built, um, you know, as people come in and we hire only the highest caliber people, people are confident that we're doing things a certain way that fit what they do. And we feel like we have two quarterbacks that are as good as anybody else out there in the country. Um, it's a position that's going to be a great battle in the springtime and then again in the summer. So we need guys that have an edge, that have a chip on their shoulder. These guys have it. They're extremely talented. They're high character guys, tough guys, team leaders. It's going to be fun watching these guys come into the program. I want to double down on Noah Sewell. To me, he was one of the most explosive players I've seen in person when I saw him at the opening. I think he's a D lineman. I remember him screaming, saying, I told you I was a linebacker as he was hawking dudes at the linebacker position. What are your thoughts about the brother of one of the best linemen I'd assume you'd ever coach? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little brother, so I'm never going to refer to Noah as a little brother, ever. <laughs> and this is, to me, epitomize him. We are working the all-poly camp a couple of years ago when he was just a sophomore. And during that camp, there's an actual, there's a unit period where you break off in a teams and you run your, you know, your, your inside run, your team pass, and then you scrimmage. Well, Noah lines up as a Wildcat quarterback and runs quarterback power, and two guys try to submarine tackle him, and this guy hurdles him at 260 pounds. I mean, jaws dropped all over the place out there. Every coach that was out there coaching said, my Lord, that guy is one of a kind. He is that, again, a guy that we feel is the very best in the country at what he does, just like Justin, just like... Jackson, so uh, I can't wait to see I think you see him here and the rest of the guys here together. <laughs> okay, I, I need you to help me on the pronunciation, and I like your thoughts on this guy who's going to play offensive line. Faopi Laulu? Very close. That's close? very good. Very good. I think to appreciate him and his family, you need to come with me on the home visit because our offensive line coach was just there, and it was the ultimate feast. I mean, I saw a crab the size of, like, Frisbees, man, <laughs> laid out there on the plate, and Faope was a guy we had a chance to work with out at a camp this past summer. I was absolutely blown away by his athleticism, his twitch, recoverability, the way he could bend and come out of his hips. And he did this at about, it's, well, he's probably underestimated at 6'7". He's probably 6'8", and probably just at 390, 395. This guy's got a world of talent, and he's always training. He's always working out. He's hungry for success. Can't wait to have him here. Don't know how many guys offensive line play a little volleyball as well. I mean, just oh, like not the combination you typically think of. Uh, Coach, it's been awesome spending some time with you the last couple months or so. Congratulations, not only in the class, but I, I think it's big time. Let's talk about the present here. Rose Bowl, Pac-12 champs, take care of business in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. Honored to represent uh, our conference and, and looking forward to getting better as the years come.